Broom Vroom, let's talk about the new historical drama, The Bike Riders. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about The Bike Riders, which is coming to theaters on June 21st, 2024. It is a new drama that is based on a 1967 book, I think, called The Bike Riders. This is a fictional story that is based on that book, so the characters... I think are made up there are some that appear to be like from the book but they might have been fictionalized the club is made up a lot of the story is made up but the spirit of the book the spirit of a like rebellious bike riders permeates this movie does that spirit turn into a good movie well my hot take is i think you should watch it later i liked a lot about this it was a well done period piece and a great cast uh it had some really amazing sound i mean when those motorcycles are blaring through the theater it is awe-inspiring but the film is a little bit slow and it has this kind of like choppy interview style at the start uh it makes it for not a very exciting movie for a movie about rebellious motorcycle gangs i liked it but not as much as i expected i think you should wait for it to come to like streaming or on demand watch it from the comfort of your own home but all that being said i'm gonna tell you a little about the film a few things i liked, a few things i didn't like and really quickly go into the ending i promise this one will be quick if you don't want to know what happens in the ending in this movie i would turn off when i get there before that though i'll keep it vague i'll keep it spoiler free i'll let you know when i get to those spoilers so the bike riders is about this fictional chicago club called the vandals that was started by this enigmatic charismatic leader named johnny and the film kind of details how, how they grew some of the big incidents and how the gang kind of changed as america changed in this period it goes from like 1967 maybe 1963 like 1975 so it's a very tumultuous time in america and this uh motorcycle club kind of grows and changes with america at the time so all that being said things i liked about this movie the first it's a fantastic cast it's a really great cast i love the cast you got tom hardy who i adore you've got austin butler who has been fantastic in like everything he's done recently you've got jody comer who is also amazing in the film uh you also have some really fun like uh i don't know cameos or just other characters you got michael shannon you got norman reedus you got Mike Face. You have a really fantastic cast to kind of like tell the story. The second thing I loved related to the cast, the characters. You get some really out there characters. Like I loved uh, Tom Hardy as Johnny. Jodie Comer as Kathy was fun. She was like a very different personality than the other biker uh, gang folks. Uh, Austin Butler does a good job as uh, Benny. Not the most likable character, but he's fine. Um, but you just have a really kind of crazy group of characters all together in this like misfit club. It's like a club of misfits and all these different characters kind of add to that. The uh, last thing I loved, I love the sound. It is really, really good sound. Um, you know, both from the period pieces, you got some you know, rock music from the time, you got some rebellious music from the time. But more importantly, it's a movie about motorcycles. You've got just a really rich, wonderful, powerful motorcycle sound. Like in the theater, when those bikes were just like humming down the highway, like you can tell why everyone was intoxicated by them. You can tell why people wanted to join this. It was really cool. It was really amazing to see them all and hear that sound, hear, you know, the, the growl of the motors, like all going down the highway. It was just a really, really cool way to add to the experience. Uh, all that being said, things I didn't love as much about this movie. The first, it's a little slow. The film has a lot of, inter of interviews, which can be interesting, provide some background, provide some like history to this club, but they also kind of grind the story to a halt. It's not terrible, but it does definitely slow down what could be an exciting and interesting movie when you've got these like interviews kind of going back and forth with uh, Kathy's character describing things. I mean, it is very helpful to get some background. It kind of is a quick way to get some background, but it also just makes the story kind of progress very slowly, which is weird for a movie about a motorcycle club. And the other thing I didn't love, again, I didn't love the interview style. Like the film is at its best. It's kind of like half and half, half of it are interviews. And that is because the film is based on a book is based on this book that this person wrote after he kind of like embedded himself in these motorcycle gangs. So he would interview them, he'd take pictures, he used that to write a book. So they, I think they're trying to stay true to kind of how this original source material was created. But that being said, the interviews aren't great. It starts to kind of feel clumsy. The film is at its best when it is just a drama, when you don't have the distraction of the interviews, when you just have the characters kind of doing what they're doing. And so... It gets more like that towards the end, but the interview style really kind of hurts it at the start. And then towards the, at the like the very end, like the last, you know, quarter of it, you get interviews as well. And it's just, I, I wish it was just a drama, just a motorcycle rebellious drama. I think that would have been more interesting, but you know what? I think they wanted to say true to the source material. So it is what it is. 
So all that being said, the bike riders comes to theaters on June 21st, 2024. Like I said, I think you should watch it later. I liked it, but uh, not as much as I expected to. I mean, the one thing for the theaters is you've got that really great sound. You got that really beautiful like motorcycle roar uh, at times. So that is something going for the theaters. But if you've got a nice sound system or you just kind of like want to watch it at home, I'd recommend that. So really quickly, I'm going to go into like a synopsis and any discussion of this movie. So if you don't know what happens in this movie, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So the Bike Riders is a fictionalized story based on kind of like real life gangs, although it seems like the gang itself was like created for the movie. The characters seem to be created for the movie. You don't get like a, a like a like a comparison of people at the end. You get some pictures that look like they are similar to scenes in the movie. So I think they just kind of created a whole story around uh, the, the kind of ethos and some of the like the the pictures, but not the the actual people uh, that were depicted in the book. So basically. The film starts with uh, how Benny and Kathy met. Benny is this like rebellious, hot-headed kid who is played by Austin Butler. He is very attractive. He is very kind of mysterious. Um, and he instantly takes a shine to Kathy, who is this like a little bit more straight. She's not the kind of person you expect to be in a biker gang. She shows up at this biker bar because her friend is there. Uh, she hates it, but she does meet Benny and she kind of like is instantly attracted to him. She wants nothing to do with this biker culture, but uh, eventually the, the biker guys like basically pressure her to take a ride and Benny offers her a ride. And so she rides home with Benny. Now, when she gets home, Benny drops her off. Her boyfriend's there. He is worried. sick. she's, she's, she's out till like four in the morning. Uh, so she's coming home really, really late. Uh, her boyfriend is you know, upset with her, angry, takes her inside. Benny leaves, but then comes right back and just like sits outside her house. And again, to be as attractive as Austin Butler, like the things that he does in this movie are like, borderline creepy like basically at the bar he says like almost nothing to her he just like smiles at her and says hi and she was like instantly smitten with him like barely says anything to her uh on the ride home and then when he gets there he like parks his car outside of her house and just sits there which is very creepy but it's austin butler he's very attractive so it, it's fine now he sits there through the night and through the next day like he just sits there smoking staring at her house when uh kathy's boyfriend comes home after work he sees benny there he gets angry at, at him for being there he gets angry at kathy for some reason i don't know why kathy's like i told him to leave he didn't leave he just gets angry he takes his stuff and leaves so he drives away now that the boyfriend's out of the picture benny goes up to the door knocks and says like hey do you want to go on a ride kathy smiles they go for a ride and apparently five weeks later they were married now after this initial meeting scene, you get into like the founding of the club and the found the club was founded by this like enigmatic charismatic character named Johnny, who was played by Tom Hardy. He wanted a like racing club. He just wanted like a club to, he saw like, uh, I think rebel without a cause some sort of like old motorcycle movie and just was smitten by it. And so he wanted to form his own racing club. They formed like a dirt bike club where they would race around, but he didn't want to race dirt bikes. He wanted to like go riding. And so he started a motorcycle club and took some of the dirt bike members with him. And that was the original group for the Vandals, the Vandals uh, Chicago. Now the club kind of grew and grew as, you know, more people joined up. There were more like misfits that wanted this like place to belong. The club kind of like appealed to them, appealed to like people that wanted respect, people that wanted to like be part of an organization. And so the club grew and part of this was Johnny. Like Johnny did a good job of like keeping people in the loop. He organized like outings. He drank, they had fun. It was basically like a, a social club for misfits. But as the club grew, it seemed like the influence and pull of power got to Johnny. Like he was a leader and he originally got that because he started it and all the people like respected him. But eventually it feels like he had to kind of like flex to stay on top, make sure the guys respected him, make sure that like he was the one that everyone respected. So like at one point they are arguing about He's starting another chapter and one of the guys is like hey i got some friends up in some other place i forget where it was uh and they want to start a chapter and we drank with them when we did our road trip they seem cool right can we can i start a chapter and i was like no nah, i don't think so i think this is this is our bar this is our regional thing i don't really want other people to be there and the guy the other vandals like well then i guess i challenge you because that, that's part of the rules one of the, part of the rules is like any vandal can challenge the leader at any time so they fight, they, you know, they shoot. Johnny's like, do you want fists or knives? And the guy's like, well, fists, I don't want to kill you. And so they they fight out. 
And that guy like seems to be getting the better of Johnny, but Johnny is like scrappy. He will do whatever any whatever it takes. And so he like bites the guy in the leg, like draws blood, and then he like snaps his finger. Um, and you know, after that, the guy like yields, and Johnny's like, you know, you can tell your friends that they can have their club. And so he went through this whole thing just to like show that he was a leader and that he was approving this idea. And he wanted it to be like his idea, not that guy's idea, his idea. He like allowed it to happen. So you can see as the club is getting bigger, Johnny is getting like more drunk with power and more, you know, trying to like keep his influence in the organization. Now, another time Benny got beaten up. He was in like another city. He was wearing his colors, his like vandal gear. They said, you can't wear that here. And so they, the, the people beat him up. They hurt him really badly. They almost like severed his leg from the fight. And so Johnny's like, well, I guess we got to teach him a lesson. So he drives out there with the rest of the vandals. They show up to the bar. He like gets the name of the people and then, um, you know, tells his guys to like send some people over there and make sure they can't walk again. So he like essentially makes sure those people can't walk in. Then he burns down the bar. And while this is happening, like they burn down the bar, all the vandals are sitting out there on their motorcycles. It looks really cool. Like it looks really, really cool. He looks to the side and there's these lights. And over to the side, you see like, some police officers and firemen on either side of the group. And they're like, hey, we should get going. And Johnny's like, no, they're scared of us. We can stay. And that is the kind of like pull of power that Johnny had. That is the pull of power that this group had. And so you can see as it's getting bigger, Johnny becomes more and more like, I don't know, uh, dictatorial, I guess. Or he just becomes more and more like drunk with power. And so part of the movie also involves Johnny trying to get Benny to take over. Johnny really likes Benny. Benny is a little bit crazy. He's a little bit of a hothead, but Johnny really likes him. The club seems to like him a lot. Benny does a lot of dumb things, but he does, you know, he does seem to have the respect of the club. So Johnny sees in him like the next leader of the band vandals. He tries to like keep Benny in his ambit, keep him part of it. But this conflicts with Kathy. Kathy also wants Benny. Benny's her husband. She wants him home. She wants him to like hang out with her. At first, I think Kathy did seem to like the club. She liked the guys. It was like a fun organization. But over time, she seems to get more tired of it. And also the amount of time that Benny is spending with the club. She kind of wants him, you know, as a husband, they're married. And he seems to be spending a lot more time with the club. So I focus a lot on like these, you know, power, I don't know, abuses of power. I focus on these like violent things that happen. But the film also depicts like some of the draw of this club. Like there were a lot of social events. They planned this like big picnic where uh, all the vandals were out there and other motorcycle gangs like heard about this and came out to experience it. And even when they come out there and even when like they get into a fight, like the vandals get in a fight with a rival uh, group after the fight, they're all just drinking and talking shop. And like, you can see the pull of this organization, like the rebellious nature of it, the fun that these people had, just the like, I don't know, brotherhood that they had. There's also just like a really great funeral scene where one of the members died. He was like riding his motorcycle, a car pulled out in front of him. And the club wanted to send flowers to the family. The family didn't want that. I think they probably blamed the club for killing him because he was riding a motorcycle. And so they refused the flowers. And Johnny's like, oh, bring him here. We'll, we'll take him ourselves. And so the next scene, you see the funeral and you see all the motorcycles like lined up on the street. And you see all the members like in a, a double line, like a column essentially. Uh, or an, like, like flanking the entryway to the church and so they're all there they're all serious they're all in like black the family comes up to the funeral they're angry but it is still a powerful scene like the family the, the mother like spits on johnny but he doesn't do anything like you know he's there for respect for his friend uh the father like tells him to leave but it is a powerful scene to see all of them like lined up and to see like the, the pain that they all have that they lost one of their members so the gang grows bigger uh it gets more chapters it gets more it gets larger but as more chapters join, it becomes less like a small regional group of friends and more of like a bigger organization. And some of these new members, they're even crazier than the members that they already had. There were some people that like came back from Vietnam who had issues. There's been people who are like drug addicts. It seems like as the gang got bigger, it became less like a small fun organization and more like an actual gang. And this kind of comes to a head at this big house party where two big violent incidents happen. First, this person named Cockroach, he says he wants out. He wants to, like, become a motorcycle cop. He loves riding motorcycles. And so he's like, hey, what would be better than, like, being a cop? Like, you could ride motorcycles all day. It'd be great. Um, and he's like, but to do that, I got to, like, you know, get out of the club. I got to quit the club. And so Cockroach has been in the club since the start. He was one of the founding members. And so he tells this to some of the new members. And he's like, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. So he goes to the bathroom. And these new members 
who are, you know, we've never seen before, they go and like grab a stick and just beat up cockroach. They beat him senseless. They like break some of his ribs. They they hurt his arm. They beat him mercilessly. Now, when uh Johnny hears about this, he goes outside to like check on cockroach. He takes Benny and some of the other old guard with him. And unfortunately, leaves Kathy. And Kathy should be fine. Like Kathy is Benny's wife. Benny is like a, a strong member of the of the group. Like she should be fine. But while she's in there, three of the other vandals who are like new members see her and try to like assault her. They try to like rape her. They try to pull her into a room to like have fun. It's a, it's a scary scene. It's a difficult scene for Kathy because she, you know, should feel safe, but she doesn't. As she's like sitting there, she's like looking around and all these people that she doesn't know are like staring at her. Well, luck, you know, I guess luckily for her, Johnny comes back just in time to like stop them, like tell them to get, tells them to get lost. But Kathy's shaken up by this. Benny's not there because Benny had to go with one other person to take cockroach to the hospital. So Johnny prevents this incident from happening, but Kathy is still shaking up. Like, I don't think she feels like it's her club. I don't think she feels like she belongs. She doesn't want to be here anymore. So you also see like a little bit more of the extreme lengths that happen when cockroach finally comes out. He comes to Johnny and he's like, Hey, I want to get out. Like I want to be a motorcycle cop, but I'm worried that if I do get out, these new members are going to kill me. Like they're going to actually kill me. And John's like, don't worry. I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of you. And so taking care of him, Johnny gets Benny to come with him uh, to Cockroach's house that night. And uh, Benny, Johnny, Benny brings his gun. Johnny brings a shotgun. They go up to the house at night. Johnny shoots the lock off the door, kicks the door open, and he sees uh, Cockroach in there by himself. And Cockroach knew something was coming, so he told his like family to be out of there. Then Johnny grabs the gun from Benny and shoots Cockroach in the leg. Just like, I guess that was his like jumping out ritual. And that was it. That Then Cockroach is out. But it, it was a like extreme scene. It was like a violent way to have him leave. And it's like, this is supposed to be a social club. Like they pay dues. This is like a group. And now they are like jumping in and jumping people out. It's becoming more and more like a gang. And I think this kind of shakes Benny a little bit. Like afterwards, um, you know, Benny sees Cockroach. Or, you know, afterwards, Johnny drops Benny off and, you know, Johnny again brings up the fact that he wants him to be like a leader. He wants him to like help him run the club. And Benny's like, no, I don't want anything from anyone. Like, I don't, I don't want that. That's not me. I don't want anything from anyone. And so he jumps on his bike and leaves. And Kathy's also pressuring Benny. Kathy wants Benny to like quit the club also. She just doesn't like the club. She doesn't like what it's become. She wants Benny to be home. And so she's pressuring him to quit the club. And Benny, I don't think he can take this. I don't think he wants to quit the club. But he doesn't want to be a leader of the club. So after Kathy pressures him, after what he did to Cockroach, Benny just like hops on his bike and leaves. He like, rides off away so he leaves kathy he leaves johnny he kind of goes and does his own thing now there is also this story with this hot-headed kid this like young kid who came from a bad home he he and his friends like made motorcycles they started their own club eventually he comes to johnny and says he wants to join he wants to join the vandals and johnny's like we don't take kids like this, this is a kid it's like I don't know, 20 i think and the guy's like no, no no like come see our bikes we built them ourselves like we did it we scrapped them ourselves Johnny comes out and sees them. He's like, yeah, you know, good job, good job. But, uh, you know, we don't take kids. And we got, then this kid's like, I'll do anything. Like, uh, you know, you want us to rob someone? We'll do it. You want us to kill someone? We'll kill them. And Johnny's like, okay, you can join, but you have to, but but not your friends, just you. And the kid's like, okay, I'm in. And that, that was a test. Johnny stops him. He's like, what kind of person are you? Like, you're leaving your friends? Like, what kind of a man are you? He tells him to, like, leave and never let him see him again. Uh, that kid tries to attack Johnny. Johnny sees it. He gets cut, but he, you know, knocks the kid's wind out, uh, kicks him down, tells him to leave, to get out of there. But this seems to affect the kid. Years later, he comes back into the club uh, and he has now joined a different chapter. He's joined the Milwaukee Vandals. And so he comes in and challenges Johnny. Johnny, you know, asks, like, do you want fists or knives? And the kid is crazy. He says knives. They arrange to meet the next night at like a lake. Johnny goes and looks for Benny. He looks for his like right hand person. He's, he stops by Kathy's place. Kathy says she doesn't know where he is. Uh, you know, she's like, Can I help you with anything? What do you need, Johnny? He's like, I don't need anything. I'm just wondering where Benny is. And so it's this weird, awkward scene where, you know, these two old friends should be old friends, but they're a little bit, they're kind of contentious. I think they're both, you know, upset that Benny's not there. Uh, I think Kathy eventually says, like, looks like neither of us got him. And Johnny leaves. He goes to this uh this fight with some of the other members of the Vandals. He gets there, he has like brass knuckles and a knife, he's ready to go, and the kid comes up to him, pulls out a gun, shoots him, just shoots Johnny dead. Done. 
And that is a big turning point in the group. It co goes from being like a motorcycle group to a gang gang. This kid now takes over. He apparently turns it into a gang. It, uh, you know, they do drugs, they do gambling, they do prostitution. They turn into like more of a traditional gang. Changes the tenor of the entire club. But Benny, we see Benny later. He is in a different club. He's like hanging out in a different Vandals bar. Uh, one of the people gets a call and he goes to Benny. He's like, hey, I just heard that uh, that Johnny, uh, that this guy named Johnny was shot. I used to ride with him, right? And Benny's like, yeah, I used to ride with him. Seems to affect Benny a little more because later that the next scene, we see Kathy at home. She looks outside. She opens the door and Benny's there. He's sitting on the stoop uh, waiting for her. She comes outside. She gives him a hug and Benny just starts crying. And this was a big scene because Benny only cried a couple times in the movie. He never cried before. He cried once when they almost took his leg off, when his leg was broken. He thought he might lose his leg and not be able to ride. And he cries when he hears about Johnny's death. So you can tell this affects him. It really, you know, you can tell that this really affected him. Kathy's there. She, you know, comforts him. And then we find out later that Kathy and Benny moved to Florida. They got out of there. The, the gang had changed. Uh, I don't think Benny, you know, really wanted to be there anymore anyway. So they moved to Florida. Benny's working for his cousin. They have a life in Florida. She says they're happy. They seem happy. She looks out. She sees Benny. Benny's out there hanging with the cousin. Uh, he looks up at her and smiles. And then you hear some motorcycles off in the distance. And Benny kind of like cocks his ear, listens to the motorcycles. You can tell that, you know, he's, he's listening to them, maybe kind of thinking about them. And then he looks up at Kathy again and smiles. So... Seems like maybe they're, uh, you know, they're happy now. Now that they've kind of like left the club, Benny had his rebellious streak and now he is ready to sell down, I guess. But that is the bike riders. Like I said, I think you should watch later. I liked it. It, you know, it was a nice period piece, but it was a little bit slow and not as interesting as I expected it to be. So I th definitely think you should check it out eventually. Just maybe wait for it to come to streaming or on demand. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like, subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.